so I just decided I'm gonna try to do a quick exchange just change this pump out I'd really like to redo all of this I'd like to get a different pressure tank in here but this is just a stop gap so I'm putting in a uh, basically a new pump that um, I had to pull out of another place last year I want to point out that I'm going to do down here is when I undo this union is to make sure that this pipe is is secured in there so uh, when I undo it that it doesn't actually accidentally slip down. <laughs> I'll probably use a pair of vice grips or some kind of wrench just to grasp onto it. Well I guess what I'm going to do I'm just going to undo the uh, electrical cord here. Power's off right now I got it shut off. I'm um, just going to do, instead of trying to undo all this in the box, I'm just going to take this whole thing out. So this guy should go counterclockwise, and this one should be held steady. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a struggle, so I'll put the camera down here, see if we can capture it. I've tried so hard to make it better, but the good doesn't always come back. Your lips won't speak to me. Okay, so when I ended up doing the break that is I actually put my foot on this end of the wrench and uh, balanced myself on these wrenches to break it apart. Um, now there's a couple other things you can do. Sometimes that doesn't work. You can take your torch and heat up the fitting until it's really hot and then try to budge it. And then it just gets to a point where it's not worth the fight. You just take a hacksaw or take your sawzall with a hacksaw blade and just cut it through if it if it starts being too much of a fight because it's just comes to a point where it's not worth the hassle so a good little trick to keep in mind saws all and hacks all Now when it comes to threading, um, I like to use Teflon tape, uh, okay, and there's actually some special tape specifically for these galvanized fittings, but I like to use the tape and a sealant. Take my words away So a lot of times what I do is when I'm getting ready to tighten these down, I have my pieces ready and I'll take the wrench and I'll actually start from the top and spin it all the way over 
until I get to where I have to get things lined up a little better. But I'm sure your life is so much better. And then when things get tight, that's when I'll start uh, taking them and, and tightening them on the lower end. Don't be afraid to bite down on them. These actually got to be pretty darn tight in order for them to seal up good. So get it to where you think it's really close and then try to get one more turn or part of a turn. several hours now and I'm just about at the point of having to chalk this one up to a big loss and it doesn't matter which adjustment doesn't matter how I adjust the pressure switch change them out so I think I just in a situation I have a bad pump I gambled on this pump and I think I just ate shit on this one so uh, I got all kinds of problems going on here. Uh, this pump that I thought was good is actually bad. It's, something's wrong with the motor. It winds up, gets hot, and shuts off, so it's obviously no good. Plus I forgot to put the correct nozzle in the injector for a shallow well adjustment, but I put a permanent gasket on it, so I have to take it apart anyways. And it didn't dawn on me till last night that the water's going in this tank but not coming out, which means the bladder's bad and the tank is bad. So I was trying to, <laughs> I got ahead of myself because I was trying to uh, beat the storm. But as you can see, all I did was just ensure I'd have to be working out here anyways. And as long as I'm working in this, that why, why stop gap? So I just bought an all new all-in-one unit and I'm gonna tear into this. So one other thing I wanted to point out, if you do have to put this stuff together and take it apart, you do need some good pipe wrenches. That's just, you're not, you're not gonna live without these things. So uh, it's still snowing pretty good out here. I just got the new pump mounted in there. Um, uh, turned out my uh, my father had some of this high pressure, high PSI flex hose, which was pretty cool. So I just bought some barbs. I'm going to put them together with some barbs. So these guys right here, you can use galvanized or plastic. I'm, I'm using the galvanized to come off the galvanized ends. Okay, so... Uh, this morning when I went and checked the, my previous arrangement, I'd lost prime in the pump, which means the foot valve on the bottom of the pipe is probably going bad, so I'm going to go ahead and do this right and get a check valve on this. Uh, so this is pretty cool. If you can, 
and you've got the space and the time, it's always a good idea if you can get the get the check valve on the inlet of the pump, and then you never have to worry about the foot valve on the bottom. Just a good habit to get into. So, but this all-in-one tank, since it had the pump and the pressure tank right in, and it was put together in a way it would fit in this little house, which is part of the reason why I did what I did yesterday, because I didn't know how it would all fit. Um, but it is one of these either or shallow or deep well uh, contraptions, and uh, this is one of the things I don't like about this, is you gotta get, uh, well, let's see, find my tool. Uh, let's see where my tool's at. So, you got this part, and then you got a little nozzle in there. And this particular, the directions say for this shallow well, you got an 1116 wrench, you got to take this nozzle out, and then you got to replace it with a new nozzle. With the correct tube, which got a number on it, so it's like how many, how many steps do you possibly have to do just to get something to work? It's a little annoying, but uh, anyways, so I'm gonna start on that now, and then, and then they give you this little gasket. So this isn't a rubber one; this just a paper gasket. So what I'll do, this I'll just gently put some RTV around here just to kind of get this to stick so it doesn't fall off when I uh, put it on the pump. So anyway, if you do what they say, take out this little nozzle thing and replace it with the nozzle that's in the kit. There it goes. Okay, day number three. So, as of last night, it was getting dark and the pump's still not running correctly, even though everything's new. Uh, the pump kicks on and kicks off, so uh, the overload kicks off, which means, well, the manual says either the voltage is too low or the, it's wired incorrectly, which is kind of not the issue here. So the only thing I haven't checked yet is to actually pull the, pull the pipe out of the casing and see if the foot valve or the strainer is completely corroded. Let's see. Still, uh, still pretty cold out here today. Not too warm this morning. So I'm gonna pull this pipe out of the ground and see if I can't uh, make some headway here. So I pulled the pipe out of the ground and took the foot valve and strainer off. Um, there was some corrody stuff in there, not as bad as I had hoped. Uh, just doesn't seem like it was in bad enough shape to really be causing a problem. I gotta wait for a couple of things to warm up in here, so I'm just gonna go to the store and, again. So got the foot valve changed. Um, which is good, because the other one wasn't keeping its prime. And I don't know why this dawned on me, but the pump was still kicking off, and I thought I'd just better uh, take the multimeter and, and test it. I was under the assumption this was one, yeah, 120 out here. Uh, turns out, this is actually wired for 220. I have no idea why I didn't think of this earlier. Um, so, now the pump is working perfectly. I just for some reason had it <laughs> set in my head that this was 120 out here. I lit the candle as the sun went down. in an old 
just kind of leaving the wood frame on there just because the thing was already attached and I didn't have anything else to attach it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this concrete bit and I'm going to drill a little hole in the wood through the concrete and use concrete screws just to just to tack this thing down just to keep it in place just so it won't vibrate or rattle around so much. So these uh pumps with the shallow well or the deep well application have this removable nozzle. And you see with the check valve and water. Uh, it's good not to let this get too heavy because it, the weight might actually break the seal. Um, so I just put a little clamp here just to kind of make sure this whole mechanism isn't supporting all the pressure. It feels like no Thank you. 